A lot of people choose to use Vim when they feel like their current text editor is inadequate and they want to use something that's just more powerful and flexible and ultimately allow them to get their work done faster. But if you just start looking into Vim in 2021, you're probably going to come across a program called NeoVim or NVim. And unsurprisingly, some people get really caught up on the difference and they start to wonder, well, what are all the differences between Vim and NeoVim? Which one is better? What are the pros and cons of these two different text editors instead of just starting to use one of them? So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the differences to help you make a decision. So let's get some background first. Vim stands for VI Improved. So it's the even more extended version of VI, the extended line editor visual mode. And this is a text editor that's installed by default on pretty much any Unix-based operating system. Uh, VI is the one I'm talking about. Uh, whether that be a Linux distro, Mac OS, or BSD, it probably has VI on it. So Vim, it added some things that VI didn't have, like syntax highlighting, code folding for different languages, and multi-level undo redo. Vim is an extended VI, and NeoVim is like an extended Vim, but with a couple other differences. Uh, one of them is how the projects are actually being developed. So they are both free and open source applications, uh, but NeoVim is a bit more community driven, whilst Vim is really just driven by its original author, Bram Molinar. And we can see this if we go to the official uh, Vim GitHub. So if we take a look at these commits here, we can see that all of these commits are being done by Bram. You now we can go older to go to last week's commits and they're still all Bram and we could keep doing this all day but that would be boring. Uh, you get the idea, pretty much everything is done by Bram at least as far as commits are concerned. Now, this is all well and good. Bram is the author of Vim. He doesn't have to accept other people's commits if he doesn't want to. Uh, Vim is his project and he wants full control over what gets added to it. Now, this doesn't mean that other people don't actually work on developing Vim, because of course it is free and open source. Anyone can see the source code and uh, contribute to it if they want, but ultimately, Bram has the authority over what's going to get added in and what doesn't. Uh, but when everything is controlled by one person, things do tend to get a little messy. So it's not unusual for spaghetti code to start piling up. And this is one of the major criticisms of Vim is that its code base is really, really messy. Uh, maybe you don't have any coding experience, so think of it like writing a book. Uh, if you get a few hundred pages into writing your novel and nobody has reviewed it, nobody has critiqued it, nobody has looked over your writing to make sure that you don't have run-on sentences or grammatical errors or that it isn't just plain boring, it's more likely that you're gonna have those problems in your writing. Uh, and same thing with code and when this happens, uh, or at least when spaghetti code starts to happen, it makes it really difficult for people to fork it or extend it themselves if they wanted to build on it. Uh, so let's take a look at NeoVim's GitHub. So we can take a look at these commits here. Uh, and you can see that there's several different people that are contributing to this project. Uh, in fact, there's nine different people adding commits just within the first week. Uh, and the code base for NeoVim is also considered to be a lot cleaner. And in a way, it's sort of like a bleeding edge Vim because both of these applications are still in development, but NeoVim tends to get features added to it before Bram implements them uh, in his version of Vim. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more uh, in a moment. There also tends to be more radical features that are getting added because again, this is community developed. Uh, there's sort of like a consensus that people have to come to before things uh, get added. So, you know, people, different people are gonna want different things. Uh, instead of Vim, where it's all just driven by one guy, it's all kind of just one vision for that project. Now, being bleeding edge isn't all sunshine and roses. Uh, if you take a look at the issues, for example, so NeoVim is a much younger project than Vim. It's got 1.1 thousand issues, and Vim just has 1,000 issues. So kind of a high-level view of looking at it, but 10% more issues that have been opened uh, in a younger project 
you know, you kind of get the idea. Bugs tend to happen a bit more within NeoVim. I'm sure that you guys who, especially those Arch users who are using bleeding edge, uh, pro bleeding edge applications, you know the deal. When everything is just being released bleeding edge, it hasn't been tested as much, so bugs will occur. Now, this isn't to say that NeoVim itself is buggy, uh, but you might notice some bugs, especially in newer features of it, uh, especially if you're installing the absolute latest builds of NeoVim. So it might be handy to have both of them installed on your system, both Vim and NeoVim. They're, neither one of them is a very big application in and of itself, uh, but you could have Vim as a backup in case it does happen that your build of NeoVim ends up being buggy. Uh, so you can use that to get critical work done. Or of course, you could just revert back to your latest version of NeoVim uh, before things went haywire. Another big difference is Lua support. So both of these programs support plugins written in Lua, but on the Vim side, it's really just treated like another plugin language, whereas NeoVim really incorporates Lua a lot more. In fact, you don't even have to use VimScript inside of your VimRC. You could just do everything in Lua. Uh, now, another thing that is worth mentioning are the defaults uh, in NeoVim versus Vim. So NeoVim, it has a lot of default settings that most Vim users are just going to change anyway, at least as soon as they learn about making persistent settings in their VimRC. So this is good because it's going to make a lot of people who are new to Vim uh, more comfortable with saner defaults and keep them from having to make heavier modification in VimRC uh, once they get to that stage of learning Vim. And another big reason why NeoVim was originally forked for Vim, probably the biggest reason, is asynchronous I.O. So Vim, it is a single threaded application, which might seem fine considering how lightweight it is, but this becomes a problem when you start calling external commands from Vim, such as make, grep, uh, or any other shell command that might take some time because you can actually access your shell uh, from within Vim. So because the editor is single threaded, it has to wait for all of those external processes to finish before you can go back to editing text. Uh, the core program, it is still single threaded, but since Vim 8, there has been support for plugins to asynchronously execute commands in a separate process and then pass the results back to Vim upon completion. Uh, Vim 8 also added an embedded terminal, so that's another feature that only NeoVim had for a while. In fact, uh, we really have NeoVim to thank for a lot of Vim's newer features because it was the competition pressure from NeoVim. You know, Vim doesn't want to become this sort of obscure thing that nobody really uses anymore. Vim doesn't want to become the next VI, essentially. Uh, so all of that competition from NeoVim got Bram to add those features in. And I always say that competition is a good thing. Uh, that's one of the many reasons why I enjoy Linux so much because there's so much competition from different distros uh, to all be either the easiest or the latest or the most secure or the most minimal that it basically forces everybody to step their game up. And it also gives the consumer, uh, the end user, a lot more choice in their OS than you would get with Windows or Mac OS. Uh, hell, I wish that there were even more highly popular forks of Vim just to keep the Vim and the NeoVim developers on their toes and keep them adding great stuff. So there you go, the differences between Vim and NeoVim. Now let's answer the burning question that I'm sure you guys all have. Which one of these text editors should you use if you're trying to become elite text editor? Um, I would say just go ahead and get your feet wet with Vim first. Uh, you probably already have it on your machine already, so you don't have to worry about installing it or it not being available in your repository if you're using some more obscure Linux distro and you, know, you don't have to worry about building it from source from GitHub. There's a lot more documentation on Vim as well, and it would be easier to find that good documentation uh, if you're searching for the keyword Vim rather than NeoVim. But again, any documentation that you're gonna find uh, for NeoVim is probably going to apply to Vim as well uh, and vice versa. 
because as far as the main controls go, everything is the same. Uh, even the Vim script syntax that you would use to configure your editor is the same. So going from Vim to NeoVim, it isn't this huge jump. It's not like going from a manual to an automatic car or, well, the opposite would be a much bigger jump uh, or going from using Windows to Arch Linux. But NeoVim and Vim, they pretty much drive the same way. Uh, I would say that it will probably take a while before you really start running into things that you really need NeoVim for, unless you just right away need that good asynchronous functionality and that better Lua support. Um, but yeah, if you need that, I would say NeoVim is better. Hope you found this video useful. Have an excellent day.